Hello, hello everybody. Hello, Chinggu. First of all, I would like to thank you for visiting my channel. Anyway, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be showing you the video of my final thesis defense so you'll know what exactly I do here, like what kind of research I do as a forestry master's degree student in South Korea. So, keep watching and again, thank you very much. Thereafter, we measure the stem diameter height weekly and 
the biomass at the end of the experiment. The specific leaf area, leaf thickness, and the soil core area were also uh, determined or uh, measured. By the way, the soil core area was analyzed using the leaf epidermal impression technique. And uh, uh, in terms of the microscopy work, the five root samples were first dehydrated using a series of alcohol concentrations uh, from 50% to 100% alcohol concentrations. We used the Freeman sectioning method uh, under like uh, under compound microscope. And then the, the diameter of vessels were measured using the MSJ processing software. By the way, this covenant core area and other uh, digital images of, of the cross sections were analyzed using uh, the image processing software. Now, in terms of the physiological parameters, the photosynthesis, the solid conductance, I mean the intercellular CO2 concentrations were measured using the portable photosynthesis system, the LightCore 6400XC. Now, the solid conductance was measured using the handheld leaf barometer AC1. Now, in terms of the relative uh, water content determination, the detergent mass, the, the fresh mass, and the oven dried mass of the leaves were weighed to determine the RWC. The RWC was then computed using the formula indicated in the slide. Now, in terms of the total soluble sugar concentration, we use the 80% extract, 80% ethyl alcohol extraction method. Um, then the the concentration of the total soluble sugar was then read using the spectrophotometry method. We are now in the result part. As you can see in the figure, there were treatment or significant treatment effects on the stem diameter, but not on height in all species. Here, as you can see in the figure, the uh, stem diameter of Perkis epidesima and the Bicola shimita significantly decreased at water stress treatment, whereas that of Perkis significantly increased at water stress treatment with time. Now, generally, the total value mass uh, is uh, significantly higher at well water treatment than in WS treatment in all species. And uh, notably, the a background below of a background biomass allocation significantly decreased at water stress treatment in all species. Also, the below ground uh, biomass allocation significantly increased at water stress treatment for Turkus pedesima and Abitula shimitii. Now, uh, in this table, what I want to emphasize here is that well water treatment resulted in a significantly larger specific leaf area compared with the water stress treatment. And uh, I want to emphasize also that water stress seedlings uh, had significantly thicker leaves compared with the well watered ones. Now, here in this figure, what this figure is trying to tell us is that the water stress treatment uh, resulted in a significantly uh, smaller stomatal pore area or opening uh, compared with the well watered ones for characters Medicima and the Vitula Shimitii. Whereas uh, the water stress treatment significantly or had uh, a significantly uh, larger several pore area compared with the well watered one in the case of Kerkus serata. Now, uh, in terms of the uh, vessel diameter frequency, I want to emphasize here that uh, larger vessels are more frequent in water stress treatment than in well water treapment for Kerkus epidesima and the uh, Mutula in, in contrast, 
uh, smaller vessels are more frequent in water stress treatment than in well water for Kirkus Seraka. Now, this figure is uh, showing us that kyloses are more frequent in uh, water stress treatment than in well water for Kirkus Seraka and Dabitula Shimidia after eight weeks of the experiment. Now, in, in terms of the leaf relative water content, the RWC is generally lower at water stress treatment than in well water treatment with RWC of 30.49% and 84.27% uh, respectively. Now, uh, here, Kerkos Irana was able to maintain to have the highest RWC uh, specifically 71.41% even at the end of the experiment on water stress condition. This figure is showing us that photosynthesis, semiconductors, intercellular CO2 concentration uh, were generally similar between treatments at the initial and fourth week of the experiment, but they generally declined at water stress treatment at the end or eighth week of the experiment. Now, in, in this figure, what this figure would like to tell us is that the concentration of total soluble sugar significantly increased at water stress treatment than in well water treatment, especially for Kirkus epidizima and the Kirkus serrata, the two Kirkus species. Overall, the principal component analysis shows that uh, <clears throat> the variables measured in this study depicted 75.92% of the variation. Specifically, PC1 accounts for 52.43%, whereas PC2 accounts for 23.49% of the variation. The first PC is highly related to stomach pore area, photosynthesis, and then uh, stomach conductance with individuals of Kirkus Echidizima on the left side and individuals of Kirkus Serrata confined on the right side. Now, under water stress, as I presented in the previous slide, I've shown you that the stomach pore area of uh, Kirkus Echidizima significantly decreased on water stress treatment. And this explains why this explains why the photosynthesis and the stomach conductance of Kirkus epidizma also decrease on water stress treatment because studies have shown that uh, continued opening of stomata can increase osmotic stress. And this increase in osmotic stress can lead to further damage to photosynthetic machinery and uh, can cause excessive water loss via evapotranspiration. Thus, we can say that the observed ability of the Kirkus to modify or to, you know, uh, control the opening of the stomata can be uh, considered as an important strategy of the species to save water or to at least prevent further damage to its photosynthetic apparatus and the other physiological uh, processes uh, amid decreasing the uh, RWC as I presented in the previous slide. And then in terms of Kirkus Irata under water stress, its sustained growth and uh, maintained physiological functions can be you know, attributed to increased concentration of tyloses because studies have shown that uh, tyloses can aid the formation of stronger wood cells that can you know, slow down the process or can slow down the abiotic uh, cellular damage. And this exemplifies a drought tolerance strategy. In addition, the increased concentration of total soluble sugar in Kirkus Kerata can also be considered as an important strategy, drought tolerance strategy for Kirkus Kerata. Because studies have, already, studies have already reported that increased concentration of uh, uh, 
total soluble sugar can maintain high leaf relative water content. And this further explains why among the three species, Kertus irata was able was able to maintain high leaf relative water content to be exact 71.41 percent even at the end of experiment. And then going back to this plot, PC2 is highly related to uh, WC, RWC and then SNA with individuals of uh, Vitula shimitiae with high SLA leaves confined on the right on the upper part of the plot. And this exemplifies resource acquisition strategy. Therefore, we could we could say that the high SLA leaves of Vitula uh, shimitiae can be, you know, considered as important uh, trait of the species for resource acquisition, like uh, acquisition, carbon dioxide acquisition, among others. We are now uh, discussing the summary and findings or conclusion of the study. Basically, our study uh, revealed that, you know, uh, water stress treatment significantly affected the growth, morpho-anatomical, physiological, and biochemical traits of the three studied species. And then, response mechanisms differed by species, that is, avoidance for Kirkus academia, tolerance for Kirkus serata, and then resource acquisitive strategy for Bitula Sumiti. Overall, findings should improve our understanding of drought-induced traceline growth and mortality, water use efficiency, and traceline responses to drought. Thank you very much for listening.
Yeah. Say it again, please. Um, of course, there are there are a number of implications that we can derive from this study. Of uh, course, ecologically speaking, we can uh, pinpoint where and when to study when, where and when uh, to use these species. As as to where, uh, Professor Maloney, we can now at least know or identify that these species can thrive in in, in dry area in South Korea, and uh, as to when. Uh, this this species we know already we can partially imply that uh, this species can be can be planted even in dry season like summer something like that and uh, uh, economically uh, eco economical uh, implication would be of course watering is expensive so if we know already that this species can 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 thrive even and even uh, with very uh, low soil moisture at two months, I think that would be uh, very, very nice for, for, for tree planting, economically speaking. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, critical species is economically important, and uh, I think already the previous study mentioned about the water stress of critical species in Korea. So I think uh, uh, I'm just wondering what is your new finding, even new approach to the physiological, anatomical, or many kind of approach. What is your new finding uh, in drought of two critical species? Uh, to those species are uh, also like the same, and uh, as I know, it's a uh, well covered of drought. What do you find? So. I think one, one, one possible new finding of this study is the integration of all the of, of all the traits that are important in, in plant organ. Because in this study, we, we integrated the biochemical, the morphoanatomical, and uh, the physiologic. Well, physiological in one study, and that's and I think that's very important in, in, in giving very good conclusion. I, I, I think I read that paper about the, the, the uh, study on the water stress of, of characters, and I believe it's not for me, it's not that so holistic, not so comprehensive. I think I believe this study would give a better, a better uh, conclusion as to the drought uh, tolerance of characters of Kedisima. And uh, also, we emphasize here the avoidance strategy of each species. And I think that would be a very good uh, finding or new findings of this study. Professor.